whilst we are doing something with the desire, so we can either be indulging it, which with desire is quite obvious when we're indulging a desire, that might be actually acting on it or that might be thinking about it obsessively. That's another kind of indulgence. Another thing we can do with desire is really avoid it. It's like, um, I'm really attracted to that person over there, so I'm going to go that way. That's an obvious avoidance. Or a replacement, so um, if I'm feeling unhappy then I may be able to do things that can generate positive experiences. But with all of these approaches what I'm actually saying is this desire, it really is something. It, it really is something and I've either got to indulge it or I've got to avoid it or I've got to change it into something else, but w it really is something and it's a threat to me. When we recognize in the direct encounter with the desire that it is inseparable from open intelligence, it is open intelligence, it's the dynamic energy of open intelligence like um, the reflections in a crystal ball are the dynamic energy of a crystal ball, then we be, become able to allow the desire to be as it is. And in that we become free from the desire. And that freedom means that we are at choice as to how we respond to that desire. This is really powerful because this gives us the mastery over the data that we've always been looking for. So whatever I do with a desire, it makes it seem like it has power over me. Whether I follow it through or I try and avoid it, it seems like it has power. But that would be like saying um, a reflection in the crystal ball has the power to affect the original openness and purity of the crystal ball, which is not true. No matter what is reflected in the crystal ball, the crystal ball remains completely unaffected. It really doesn't mind and doesn't care. It reflects it without bias. And this is the same relationship with our open intelligence, what's looking through your eyes right now, like immediately, with all of our experience. The experience is the inseparable display, the dynamic energy of open intelligence. And each time we recognize this for a short moment, we train up our certainty that this is true, that this is the case. And practice when it's easy for you. This is a great starting point. So if there are things that we feel incredibly desirous for, and maybe we've in, been indulging them for years, that might not be the easiest place to start practicing short, practicing short moments. It might be, but it's different for everybody. Sometimes for myself I've found it's easy to practice when things are going well. You know, when there's no real challenge, when I'm feeling relaxed anyway, then to take a short moment and build up my capacity to rely on open intelligence. And then when the bigger thing comes, then I've already practiced, I've already built up that capacity. Some people find it easier to practice with the really intense negative data or really um, compelling desirous data. And however it is for you, the practice of short moments is the way that you tap into your ability to access the wisdom that is inseparable from whatever you're thinking, feeling or, or, or experiencing. So the data are the power of great benefit when we allow them to be as they are. Whilst we're doing something with them, there's just a confusing mess of misunderstanding of what our experience means. It's so simple, but it does require this training up process, even after the introduction, even after the recognition, because the habit of emphasizing and focusing in on certain data is just really something we've been doing for a long time. But it does relax, it does soften, it does open up. And just being involved in the training, in the Four Mainstays, so much of that happens naturally, like effortlessly. You know, there will be some things that we actively take short moments with and other things that just resolve naturally. Just as we gain more confidence, things that you used to do, suddenly you'll find that you're no longer doing them. Or things that you used to say, suddenly you're not using your speech in that way. You're discovering this skillfulness, this care, this love this um, capacity to be of benefit to yourself and others that is innate, it's inbuilt. And this is what we access when we go directly to open intelligence. And then we just get used to that. We repeat the short moments many times until open intelligence is obvious at all times. It's like training anything up. We learn how to do it, we practice it.